The Lord be with you. The Lord be with you on this Lord's Day. Reading to you from Psalm 97. And the psalmist says there, The Lord reigns. Let the earth rejoice. Let the many coastlands be glad. Clouds and darkness are all around him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. The fire goes before him and burns up his enemies all around. His lightning bolts light up the world. The earth sees and shakes. The mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord. The heavens declare his righteousness. And all the peoples see his glory. That is Psalm 97, verses 1 through 6 in the modern English version of the Bible. Well, that's our text. And my title for today's lesson is simply an affirmation of faith for those who believe and that affirmation is the Lord reigns the passage there says the Lord reigns let the earth rejoice unfortunately that's not always the response from the people of the earth but the earth rejoices the, the, the flowers bloom to the glory of God. The birds sing God's almighty praise. The earth rejoices. Let the earth rejoice. And let the inhabitants of the earth no longer rebel against he who sits on the throne of the universe. But let us acknowledge him as sovereign Lord and King over everything. Because the truth is, we are in troubling, troubled times. Um, it's been like that somewhat throughout history, but I think there are unique um, layers to the trouble of which uh, we see in our world today. Number one, there, there are a whole lot of people living on planet Earth now. I mean, somewhere near 7 billion people. I don't know how these estimates work or how, how this, the math works here, but the, the experts say that there are more people on planet Earth now living today than have existed throughout history. Well, we know that with numbers, we can do some of that funny stuff. I mean, you can start doubling numbers. You know, uh, you have two and you double it and it's four and then it's eight and then it's 16. Well, it's pretty relatively small for a short while. But after, you know, you start multiplying 100,000, you have to, or just doubling it, you have 200,000, you have 400,000, you have 800,000, you have 1.6 million, you have 3.2 million. And on and on. you get into some serious numbers. So the numbers thing plays a, a real part in the troubling times of which we live in. I think numbers financially 
cannot be ignored. Uh, somebody used to say uh, a billion here, a billion there, and after a while, we're talking about real money. Uh, some politician, I can't remember who. I, I've sort of revised that for this day and age, especially as we uh, are now giving away trillions of dollars because of the of this virus, uh, you know, just to keep things afloat. You know, let's pump a couple trillion or so into the stock market. Let's give away a couple trillion to the people. Let's get another package going. Of course, throw in, you know, millions here and millions there to stuff that have nothing to do with it, but I won't get into that. Uh, but, you know, a trillion here, a trillion there, and after a while, you're talking about real money. These are troubled times, folks. Nobody in their right mind can believe that if we build our national debt up to $30 trillion, that there's any possible way to rebound from that. Now, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news or anything. I'm just stating the facts that these are troubled uh, that we're in a troubled world. Our country, which is the strongest country in the world, is and has been enduring tremendous trouble. Our country is extremely divided. There is a cultural war. It's not just ideology and, and things like that. It is a definite cultural war. And number one target in that cultural war in America today is conservative Christianity. We can tolerate anything and we must tolerate everything, but not conservative Christians. We won't tolerate them. Um, so let's just be honest about it. This is a troubled world. I foresee, um, could be wrong, but I think it makes sense. The economic uh, pressures uh, that so many people have lost their jobs and are, and are just in a terrible, terrible situation. Um, that's going to affect the crime rate. Maybe, you know, they're saying that some of that's happening now. But, but I think as time goes on, so many businesses have shut down. There are many, many businesses that will not come back um, in a strange way. The government picked winners and losers, allowed some to stay open and made others shut down that basically sold the same thing. And, you know, uh, but a lot of the smaller companies will not be back. Smaller businesses will not be back. That is going to affect the economy, the employment rate and all that. Why am I saying all this? I, I'm just in the beginning here laying a foundation of the fact that if you just look at the world uh, and the way that things are now, just in a few issues like we're talking about, this is a troubled world. So uh, during times like this, uh, there's always the threat of wars and, and different things like that that could pop up. We would, uh, we're not, I don't think, in the best posture uh, to deal with uh, a trouble from another country right now. I mean, uh, the coronavirus is even affecting the military. You know, imagine uh, you can't have a military and not have close quartered. Uh, you know, uh, you get a virus or something spreading through the military or try to deploy uh, a bunch of soldiers and it's very close quarters, uh, you can have real problems. Uh, so, I think uh, the larger cities are going to, obviously, New York City has been a great example of this, um, are affected greatly. But we haven't seen the effect of the economy, I don't think, work out yet. Uh, and maybe things could bounce back uh, some, but uh, it would be hard to believe that it can come back the way that it was very quickly uh, even the most optimist uh, viewpoint it, it would be hard to see that uh, you look at all that the first thing you're going to do is say oh my goodness th this is th this is makes making me anxious don't don't talk about this well 
Na in the natural realm, naturally, it should make us anxious because everybody's making decisions and it seems like nobody's really got the answers. Everybody criticized one thing and then turned around and, and uh, in the world of videotape, uh, sometimes you've got to eat your words. But, uh, you know, let's just say that the decisions that everyone has made on all sides of this thing have not been... Uh, purely consistent so it seems like nobody has answers it seems like uh, in some ways uh, it would be hard to see better days ahead for us uh, it seems like we would it would be fair for us to ask the question um, what in the world is going to become of us does anyone have any good news? Hey, the gospel is good news. That's what the word gospel means. Is there anyone in charge? Everybody's trying to uh, be in charge. Uh, they won't let le elected leaders lead. Uh, it's almost like a, a mutiny and a, I don't know what you would call it, a, uh, a takeover all of the time now. Uh, what is going to happen with us? Who is in charge? Well, the Bible says the Lord reigns. <laughs> As people of faith, wow, we have a resource of, of faith, or a resource to, com to combat our worry and our anxiety because the Lord reigns. There is someone in charge. Now, let me define that word reign. Um, dictionary in government, politics, d diplomacy, it's, it's used in that way. It's a period... Uh, during which a monarch uh, is the official ruler of a country. So we understand that part. You know, the king reigns over the land and that kind of thing. But it also says a period during which a person or thing is dominant, influential, powerful. Um, and it's used that way. For us as believers, we understand that there is a person who reigns. And who reigns supreme, it is the Lord our God. And we see him in the person and the face of Jesus Christ. So many men and women have served as kings and queens in the world and have reigned over others. But there's only one who has and still reigns over all. And he is the one who is truly in charge. And that's good news for us today. So let's take confidence in that and faith in that today. That's my introduction. Now I want to break down uh, a few of those verses in Psalm 97 uh, that I read earlier. And I think we can uh, look at the world condition and not deny the severity of all of it, but not be overwhelmed by it. As if no one's in charge because someone is in charge. Uh, and through eyes of faith we see him as king and ruler over all. The psalmist says the Lord reigns. Here's my first point. Relax. The Lord reigns. Relax. Nothing takes God by surprise. And that's why he tells us. Uh, because we do, <laughs> many things do take us by surprise. But that's why he tells us to cast our care upon him in 1 Peter 5, 7, 7. Casting all your care, the whole of your care upon him because he cares for you. That's why we can cast our care upon him and take comfort today because he cares for us. We can relax because we know God's in control. Relax. He cares for us. And he tells us to come to him and to give him our burdens in Matthew 11 and verses 28 through 30. And that's one reason why we gather either by YouTube or now we are gathering at our drive-in service at the church at 1030 on Sundays if you're able to make it. Uh, that's why we gather. That's why we take the opportunity to gather together. Because we come together before the Lord. And we give Him our burdens. Cast all your care. Give your burden 
to the Lord. And I would say to you today, uh, don't finish this time of message today. Don't finish this video today without releasing the burdens that you feel are upon you. Uh, let's come before him. And I challenge you to do that now, especially if you're there in your house by yourself. You're, you're not by yourself. The Lord's with you and we are with you um, because the body of Christ is invisible and limitless and the kingdom of God is spiritual. So uh, we are here with you. But don't, uh, uh, don't miss the opportunity to unload whatever burden you may be feeling uh, today and unload that upon the Lord. Uh, some come to him. As believers, as Christians, some come to him, but never give him their burdens. You know, it reminds me of a story, and I love this story. It's kind of, kind of a, a, a great story, for, especially for this as an illustration. Um, one fellow was uh, going to town in the, in the old days, you know, uh, with his horse and his wagon going to uh, the store to load up with feed and everything for his animals and as he was going along he noticed a man walking and he had a, a, a large uh, backpack on looked pretty heavy and, and the man looked weary uh, so he pulls up beside him with his horse and trailer and uh, with horse and wagon and he says um, hey buddy uh, where are you headed to and he told him where he was headed to, and it was the same direction. He said, well, I can get you, you know, this far down the road. I'm going to this town, and uh, would you like a, a lift? Oh, the guy said, yes, indeed I would. I am so weary from this journey. And uh, so he says, hop on, hop on. Back of the wagon there, it's empty. Just hop on. And uh, waited a minute or two till the fellow got on, and... Off they went. And he's talking with him. Of course, he's looking forward as he's uh, steering the, the horses. And um, and they're carrying on a conversation. But after after some time, he, he sort of looks back over his shoulder. You know how you do when you're talking to someone. Even if they're in the back seat of your car, you find you, you're looking in the rear view mirror. Or you look over your shoulder. And um, he looks back. As he's talking, and he notices the man still has his backpack on. And he says to the fella, hey, fellow, we've got several miles here. Uh, why don't you unload that backpack? It looks like uh, it's pretty heavy. Oh, the fella says, now, I appreciate you giving me the lift. I appreciate you carrying me, but you shouldn't have to carry my load, too. <laughs> well, that seems kind of silly, doesn't it, uh, for us when we hear a story like that? But you know what? So many of us do the same thing with the Lord. We come to the Lord. We give Him our heart. We give Him our lives and everything. But we're not about to trouble Him with our burdens. Ah, uh, friend, today, let me tell you, the Lord reigns. Relax. Unload your burden today and trust Him. Relax because God is in charge. And He's the only one who uh, can take your burden and lift your burden. And, and He's in charge of this world. So whatever burdens are coming upon us because of the present distress, give them to the Lord and trust Him. He is in charge. I'm glad to tell you today that it, uh, at times when it seems like nobody's in charge, there's one in charge. It's the Lord God. Relax. He's in charge. And he's the only one that can be trusted with such power. Many people try to be in charge today, but uh, not very many are, can be trusted with power. Power corrupts. Absolute power absolutely corrupts. But God's in charge, and he can be trusted with absolute power. And the good news is, he cares for you. Thank God. 
Well, number two, second thing I'd like to mention to you today is rejoice. The Lord reigns. Relax. The Lord reigns. Rejoice. Notice uh, he says that in the text. The Lord reigns. Let the earth rejoice. That's good advice. See, we can rejoice because God's reigning and God knows the future. None of what is happening in our world today took God by surprise. He knew the present situation was coming. In fact, he knew it from the beginning. That's what being omniscient means. He, uh, he knows all things. He knows everything that, that is going to happen, even everything that could have happened and didn't happen. And on and on you can go with that. Amazingly, Jesus predicted that signs like this uh, would occur before his return. And Matthew chapter 24. Now was he talking about our time? You be the judge. Matthew, uh, Listen to Matthew 24 verses 7 and 8. He said, For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And we, see, uh, we can see kingdom rising against kingdom. Uh, not just as countries, but as uh, people who are living and following certain philosophies or ideologies and uh, rising against one another. He said there will be famines. Um, they're worried right now about meat and other uh, things that are going to occur. Um, we're just in the beginning of this right now. Uh, but he said there will be famines. There will be epidemics, which is the same word as plagues or pandemics and earthquakes in various places and earthquakes have increased in amount uh, for years. He says all of these are the beginning of sorrows, the beginning of the trouble that uh, could occur on planet earth. Paul uh, talked about the same time, we believe, in 2 Timothy uh, verse, chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. I'm going to read some of these verses. I'm going to read a lot of uh, scripture during this uh, part, uh, this second point here. Uh, in fact, that's what preaching is. Well, preaching is not just giving your opinion or telling nice stories. Uh, the call to preach is to preach the word. So uh, if a sermon has very little word content, then they weren't preaching according to the Bible. So I, I make no apology for sharing and reading uh, sometimes uh, several passages during a message. So here he says, Know this, in the last days perilous times will come. Men, now I'm going to pause here for a second. I want you to really listen to these verses and tell me uh, how much... How closely they relate to the time that we've been living in and for the last 20 or 30 years. Men will be lovers of themselves. Lovers, I'll just stop on that point. Narcissism in our day and age is at an all-time high. But okay, Men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, and now that's promoted far and wide, unnatural affection, truth breakers, they won't keep their words, slanderers, they, you can destroy somebody's uh, reputation with now with Facebook and social media just in the snap of a finger. And unrestrained, what an unrestrained culture. Fierce, despisers of those who are good, you hear me now, dear friend. Traitors, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. God gave us many things to enjoy in this life. But he never meant for those pleasures to become a substitute for our spiritual life and for our pleasure we receive for being in right relationship with him. 
but the reason why church attendance has been down so much throughout our country in recent years is because people worship pleasure and they love pleasure more than they love God. Having a form of godliness. Oh, we, we, we know how to play the, we know how to go through the motions. We know the right things to say. Having a form of godliness but denying its power. Turn away from such people. Those of this nature, he goes on and mentions, uh, uh, let, let me just skip on down to verse 7 here. Always learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Uh, add a little busybody uh, verse in there uh, that I won't uh, comment on right now. But um, how, do we, how should we react to such times? Maybe that's our time. Maybe not. But maybe it is. If it is, how should we react when these times arrive? Well, there's a right way to react, and the Scripture gives us that. Uh, I, I believe Luke 21 would be helpful in this. Luke 21, verses 25 through 28. Uh, there will be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and the earth. Um, distress of nations. I think we just had a major eclipse last summer. I hope you got to see that. Uh, perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Listen to this. And I don't think we're here yet. But listen to this. Men fainting from fear and expectation of what is coming on the inhabited earth. For the powers of heaven will be shaken then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to happen, here's your response. Look up and lift up your heads. For your redemption is drawing near. He says, whenever you see signs like this, when the world is panicking, the church rejoices. Why? Because God is in charge. The Lord reigns. Rejoice. Now, if we didn't know who was in charge, we would surely react differently. But we can look up and be encouraged that God reigns. When we remember who's in control, we can rejoice. Now listen to one more passage I want to read. Uh, from Romans chapter 8, verses 28 through 39. We know all things work together for good to those who love God, those who are called according to His purpose. For those whom He foreknew, see, God knew you. He knew everything that's going to be happening in our lifetime. He predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son so that He, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivering him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It's God who justifies who is he who condemns? It's Christ who died, yes, who has risen, who is also at the right hand of God, and who also intercedes for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we're killed all day long. We're counted as sheep for the slaughter. Now, in all these things, we're more than conquerors through him who loved us. I am persuaded... Neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor principalities, nor powers, neither things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. He says either neither life nor death can separate us. My question to you today, are you ready, should you die, are you ready to be in the presence of God? That's the appeal of the gospel, my friend. Not only uh, 
do we unload our burden? I want to do it just the opposite of the way we did before. But we also must give Him our heart and give Him our life. Make sure that you've firmed up that relationship on both ends. Give Him your heart. Give Him your life. Give Him your burden. Relax and rejoice because you know He is in control of this world. Thanks be to God. He's king. Okay. Let's look at the third one here. The Lord reigns. Relax. The Lord reigns. Rejoice. The Lord reigns. Remember. Don't forget this in the days ahead. Keep, keep your mind uh, on this. Keep it that you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. Remember this. In returning, we find peace. Well, whether or not this present distress that we're going through, with all of the potential other events that can be attached to it, whether or not this is the beginning of the end, time will soon tell. But know this regardless. It's still going to be a difficult time. And it has been for many. But it likely will be ahead. And know this. That whether or not this is the beginning of the end. Or just another crisis period in history. We can take comfort. And and our, our faith can be increased when we remember that God has brought his people through things like this throughout history. That we're not the first ones to live through difficult times. In fact, the people of Israel were in slavery in Egypt for 400 years. That was a difficult period. David, the beloved king of Israel, warrior and king, was pursued relentlessly by a tormented king, King Saul, who wanted him dead. And it was a long period that David endured there before he got to the other side of that trial. We know that in the New Testament that the early church endured terrible persecutions, even martyrdom. We often forget this or are we need reminded, as Peter said, stir up, uh, I'm here to stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. Let me remind you that many of the apostles, well, 11 out of 12 of them, were martyred. Wow. God brought them through difficult times, preserving their souls and keeping them. And then, of course, there's Jesus, our greatest example, our Lord when you're feeling down or you're feeling afraid, consider Jesus. He was despised and rejected of men, the prophet said. He endured the cross, despising its shame. But from the cross came the resurrection and his glorious reign now and the reign that is yet to come. The resurrection vindicated his message, guaranteeing our salvation. I want to say this. I want you to remember this. That God saw this coming. And you may feel like, well, what about my goals? What about my dreams? What about my divine destiny? I want you to know today that God's plan for your life is unchanged by what is happening in our world. The plan that he had for your life 
This, all of this was factored into it. That's why he had you born during this time. He, he had you born. He had you he, come here. Be a part of this time in history because he specially equipped you to live during this time to fulfill the destiny he has for your life during this time in this world. And he will yet accomplish in your life everything he had planned. He foreknew you and predestined you <laughs> to live in this day. All right, let me conclude. What were our three points? Do you remember them? The Lord reigns. He's in charge. The Lord reigns. Relax. The Lord reigns. Rejoice. The Lord reigns. Remember. Remember this also. Creation gives a witness that God's in charge. This is the rest of that passage in Psalm 97 that I read. Verse 2 says, Clouds and darkness are all around him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Fire goes before him and burns up his enemies all around. His lightning bolts light up the world. The earth sees and shakes. The mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord. At the presence of the Lord of the earth. The heavens declare his righteousness. And all the people see his glory. The Lord reigns. Let us rejoice. Let us let us relax, let us rejoice, let us remember. He reigns and he's been with his people throughout tough times before. And he, he's with you and I today. So commit, commit everything on your heart today to the Lord. Commit yourself to him and commit your way to him. He'll direct your path. Stop worrying. Relax. Remember. Rejoice. The Lord reigns. He's in control. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus of Nazarene. And I wonder how. Could love a sinner such as me